Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Reboot. It is a beautiful day out here, everybody. I've spent the last day or so actually taking down some ash trees on the property, dead standing ash trees. They're going to mill up very nicely on the sawmill. But today, guys, I'm going to get back to tackling the gable end, okay? With any luck, maybe I'll get three or four panels up there. Maybe I'll get lucky and I'll get halfway done. But let's get busy. Big learning experience for me up there. The whole building's been a learning experience. Big challenge. Let's get busy and see if I can get this gable end buttoned up. Okay, everybody, I've been up the ladder. I've got my measurements for that first piece to go into the gable end that I'm working on. And on one side, I need to start the angle at two inches. And the other end, it needs to run out to 16 and a half inches. So let's mark it up. That off. So there's the line. probably can't see it there right there this is the piece that I'll be hanging and again for those of you who have done this before you'll know that you reverse your blade and you can use these skill saws Hey everyone, remember to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you. I think we have a winner. That feels really good, everyone. Really had a lot of nervousness in terms of tackling this this part of the build process. For all the pros out there that do this for a living, I know this is easy for you. You'll have all the proper lift equipment, well experienced. But uh, yeah, not the same for the DIYers amongst us. So anyways, like I just said, first piece going in on a gable end. That piece isn't going anywhere. It's easier to be on the ladder to get these pieces in because on the deck of the scaffolding where the camera is sitting right now, I end up on my knees with my head down below my feet in an extremely awkward situation. So in this corner of the gable area, it's a good place to be on the ladder.
Okay, so now what I've also done, you'll see it in just a few seconds, I've started to cut the soffits. So I have six of them, and uh, I'm going to start to put those in place now. Let's adjust that because I'm going to end up in that corner. The system is working, it's stable, it's mobile, and take a look up there. That's what I was able to get done. It's not too shabby, eh? All right, let's continue. There's a lot of trim work to consider and plan for if you're going to take on a project like this. And perhaps the most difficult place to install this trim work is when you're at the top or the peak of the gable where I am right now. So the scaffolding that I've built for, my, built for myself is very good, it's mobile like I've said earlier, but I'm at 12 feet and this gable is 7, 7.5 feet, the peak of it above my head. So as you see here I actually have to climb into the trusses here and hold on with one hand while I try to attach and work on the various trim pieces with the other hands. trim in place you can see that I'm able to move forward rather quickly 
despite the fast forward effect, rather quickly with installing these soffit panels. Then it was time to take some more measurements before getting ready to install another piece of the red siding. My plan is to insulate the building, so that is I'm going to insulate the walls and I'm going to insulate the ceiling inside, so that's at the 12 foot height level, the bottom of the trusses. That's why there's no building wrap up here in what is essentially the attic area along these wall panels or along these siding panels. I've um, talked to some contractors, I've also seen it on. Um, I believe it's RR Buildings with Kyle and his crew where he explains that he does not put building wrap up in the attic area either. The idea being that the insulated box, the insulated part of the building, is wrapped, it's wrapped tight, building wrap, tape, etc. insulation, whereas you want that good airflow up there in the attic being drawn in from the eaves and up through the ridge vent at the top of the roof. At the same time, if you leave out the building wrap on these gable ends, it just helps with the breathing a little bit. At least that's what Kyle and some of the contractors that I've spoken to have said. So there you go. That's the reason why I've got no building wrap up here in the gable ends. Here's another example of me working at the very top of the gable. So again, I'm standing inside or on the webbing of the truss. I'm about a foot above my, uh, the top of the uh, scaffolding that I've built. And so this is a very good reminder or instructional piece here that if you plan to take on a project like this and build it largely by yourself, you need to A, rent scaffolding or buy it, Two, get a man lift, a man lift that works on your site, rent it usually. Or three, build some scaffolding like I did. I honestly believe that if you try to do this kind of work at the end of a ladder, it will be extremely exhausting and your days will be very long.
And here's another example. There is just no way I was going to be able to get this fascia in place at the end of a ladder. Without this scaffolding that I built, it would just be near to impossible for a person like myself to do this. So again, if you're going to do a project like this, rent scaffolding, rent a man lift, or hire a crew wow. to put this stuff in because uh, if you're not up there able to work uh, with some good footing and at least one hand free, it's just not going to work that well. Unfortunately, I forgot to take footage of the remaining work that needed to be done on this gable end. I'll include some pictures or some brief footage in the next video to show you how it looked. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I look forward to you coming back for some more uh, fun with me on the channel in the near future. Take care.